Welcome to the meadow. Two years ago, we bought an old 70s house with the idea of fixing it up for our family of seven. My husband and I run an interior design firm in Great Falls, Virginia, just outside of Washington, DC, where we also rehab and flip houses. We've moved every couple of years as our family has grown, and I've used our homes as my design laboratories, exploring and honing my style, and also using our houses to showcase our design work for potential clients and the various product collections that I design. Each house we've lived in has been an invaluable learning opportunity for our family. As much as we loved the house we had been living in for five years, which was a long time for us, the moment we stepped foot into the meadow, we knew we had to go. It simply called to us. I like to think of the experience of dreaming about building and renovating a home as the first part of our story within it. Sometimes building gets a little bit messy, gets a little bit stressful, but when you can't see the forest through the trees, just see the trees. Looks amazing coming down, you see that? Mm -hmm. So it's gonna be floor to ceiling, that view. I got the laundry room now. <gasps> the arch door, you knew this was here? Yes. Oh my gosh, I have chills. My leg hair's growing. Look at this. It's so pretty. There's a little morning duck. Hi, sweetie. Sweet little duck. Babe, this is so beautiful. This could make me cry. I can't wait to live here. I cannot wait. And then there's gonna be a little doggy door at the bottom. So we can just do one, maybe two. <gasps> the pantry one's in two. Okay, look at it. I love it, and the window view is in. You guys, this is our orangery. Look, this is gonna be where our dining table goes. Bill, you know what that is? Uh, I don't know. Oh, this thing is And there's gonna be two big cozy chairs here, and there's gonna be a sink for right hair room. And then the wonder I miss. Well, I wanna collect the good things. And then our garden's gonna be there, and we're gonna come in and wash our veggies. No one cares. Babe, look how pretty this looks just seeing like this view and seeing that. See how pretty it just looks, even having that sculptural thing there and seeing all this. Where did you look? This whole thing will be our, our vegetables and our herbs and our flowers. And we'll be able to just be in this glass room looking out. I just got the first samples for my new wallpaper collection with One Kings Lane and I'm freaking out right now. I'm approving colorways, I am tweaking colorways, and I'm going through and I have my little helpers here. We're gonna help me do this. So, Lori, you ready? Let's go, girl. All right, what about this one? Approved. Let's see, right? well, I don't know. Yes, approved. Told ya. <laughs> You're right. Along with designing right, homes for clients, see. I also design Here's products me. for the home. I've had a hand-drawn fabric collection yeah. for many years and it's been a dream of mine to finally have a wallpaper collection. The real creative genius behind Lauren Lee's. Oh, now geez. try the black one. Is that amazing? Yes. I want this one too. I mean, that's perfect in that color, right? So funny. Buttercup. Fill me up, fill me up, buttercup. Don't break my heart. Why is another one? Too young. I mean, it's gorgeous. See a throw up color? Many times, throw up color, I generally really, really like it. So that I need tweaking, but I'm intrigued. Ever since I was a little girl, I've loved wildflowers. I developed an early love or obsession with flowers in general, but wildflowers were my favorite. Flowers from the garden were always beautiful to me, but they were planned, they were planted. Wildflowers were an unexpected gift that you would stumble upon. 
It's that spirit of unexpected, carefree simplicity that inspired me to start a textile collection that celebrated the natural beauty of wildflowers. I've always loved going out in nature and foraging for beautiful flowers and plants. And I wanted to bring that love for wild plants and flowers into my interior design. My textile collection is a celebration of the natural world as I've seen it. Unexpected, wild, and awe-inducing. I'm inspired by the plants that meant so much to me in the past, but I'm also inspired by vintage textiles and nostalgic patterns. My textile collection is over 10 years old, and up until this point, it's been fabrics only, but I've always wanted to expand into wallpapers. In my interior design projects, I love papering an entire room from the walls to the ceiling and creating this cozy, amazing feeling. For years, I've used many other brands' papers, like this beautiful one by Schumacher, shown in the bedroom, but now it's finally time to put my textile patterns on paper. Boho stripe. Boho stripe. Can I go a little higher? Approved. I feel indescribable gratitude to be able to get to do this and to know that these plants and flowers that mean so much to me are gracing the walls of people's homes all over the country. I'm so glad to see this worked out because this was like brain twisting. So I'm trying to understand it's going to go straight here and then come down and then it's going to go straight there. That's where my head was. The girls' bedroom has given me a run for my money. There is a large dormer that expands across their entire bedroom into their toy room, but I wanted it to feel as if only their window was a dormer. So I added little bump outs on either side of the window to make it look like a true dormer. This gives it a cozier and more intimate feeling. When designing new spaces in construction, the tendency can be to make rooms as large as possible, but I really wanted to make sure that our house feels cozy and charming. And so in lots of the spaces, I was focused on actually making them feel smaller. These are awesome. I love them. Yeah. I want it to look like dormers. Now that the construction is finally moving along, it's time to nail down our finished selections like paint colors, tile, wallpaper, stones, and all of that good stuff. We spend a lot of our extra time on the weekends in the design studio picking out things to use in the house. Along with a textile collection, I also have a tile collection with architect. There are several materials collections within our overall tile collection, including ceramic, porcelain, and stone, but also hand-painted terracotta, which is very, very similar to my textile collection and based on my favorite plants and also animals. I love finding something beautiful in nature and then incorporating it into a hand-painted tile and then incorporating it into a client's home. I'm so excited to be getting to use my tile in our house, and right now we're looking at using it in the girls' bathroom. They are trying to decide between the yellow fern and the green fern. Yeah. 
Your cabinets are going to be this color. So you guys are both more into the green than the yellow because you guys used to be all yellow. Now you're thinking green? No, yellow. I Designing by committee with my six and eight year old has its challenges, but I do have to say I love bringing the kids into the design of the house. I feel like it makes them more invested in the house. It's teaching them how to design, how to mix colors and patterns. And so I do love it despite the very mixed signals I get from them. We're gonna do wood walls, but we could just get a little All right. thinner. Like how pretty would that be, Jelzy? You like that? Wait. If we did that, oh my gosh. What if it was yellow? <laughs> What if we did the geese on the floor and then the, this on the walls and that, this on the cabinet, this on the walls, and then like geese on the floor. It's a little more exciting than wood walls. One of the biggest decisions I've been faced with is which white to use on the plaster walls throughout the house. There is an endless selection of whites out there, but I find closing one of my eyes and staring at my options really helps me narrow it down. I'm able to imagine what it will look like on the walls. Which white? Time is flying by and construction is chugging along. New framing is going up every day and we're starting to really be able to visualize what the house is going to feel like. Summer is coming to an end and we are once again turning our attention to the meadow itself. Hey guys, I'm here at the meadow and we have mowed the entire thing. You can hear all the construction is going on behind me, but we have mowed the entire main hill of the meadow. We left half of the property unmowed to try to keep bugs and birds uh, and things having a place to go. But we are doing our second attempt at trying to kill some of this invasive grass that we have. You can see it all behind me here. We are laying down tarps. We've got huge tarps. I think they're 30 by 30, but maybe I'll correct that. We've got huge tarps and I'm gonna lay them down with Dave all over the grass and try to kill big patches. And once those are dead, we'll do attempt number two at putting seeds down. Some of our old seeds came up, but not enough of them. So hopefully this will actually kill the grass this time. All that wing stem there is a really great native. That's the yellow flower that you're seeing. Beautiful. We also have some goldenrod already growing. Oh look, there's a patch that we left when we mowed it. You can see it up there. So we kept what we could. Um, when the guys mowed, we asked them to save our aster field, but they did not. So this entire area used to be really beautiful wild asters, but they are now gone. I'm hoping the seeds uh, are still in the ground, but I'm a little sad about that. I do have some seeds saved from the plant, so I, I could put them down later. Okay, I'm gonna show you here. One of my favorite plants that we have growing all over the area is this wing stem. It's so beautiful. Wow, that's a hawk. You guys hear that? You see it? Here's our creek, and you can see we've got more wing stem down there. And then we have this butterfly bush here where you can see the butterflies love. Butterfly bush is not native, um, but I'm not gonna be able to bring myself to do anything about it because it's gorgeous. And there's so many butterflies and bees on it. Here's the wing stem again, hoping to get more of it up on the property. You can see pollinators just love it. I see it'll be not to bother you this morning. 
Dave is starting tarp number one. And you can see there is one patch up there of goldenrod that the guys did not take down when they mowed. A couple of other patches of things we had them keep. But unfortunately, I lost my entire area, this little aster field down at the bottom. The didn't really listen to what we said and completely mowed it down. So I'm kind of sad about that. Those are so pretty. You guys, come look at these. I love this. They're so pretty. I love walking through it. That beautiful little bug, look. Hello. Can you hear me where you are? I search for ways to call to you. I wish I knew today the hollow shells in the corn swallowed all the darts I threw all to you. I picture this place one day just completely filled with wildflowers. Throughout the years, native wildflower meadows have been replaced with cut lawns. Cut lawns may look pretty to us, but in all honesty, they're a green desert that does not support life. Year by year, we lose habitats for wild animals, rabbits, foxes, raccoons, wolves, birds, insects. Bears, all of the animals that we need to keep our ecosystem healthy and thriving are kicked off the land so we can have lawn. Our hope is that by turning a good portion of our lawn into native meadow, we can support biodiversity and bring new life onto our property. All right, so we're all done. Only about, I counted, I think we need 16. Um, hopefully this kills the grass. Attempt number two will hopefully go better than attempt number one. Four down, 12 to go. Where's the pizza thing? <laughs> I have something I'm really excited to share with you. Um, I don't know if you guys remember, but last April, my son, it was my birthday, my son gave me a bouquet of dandelions. And he said, happy birthday, mom. Uh, this is a whole bouquet of wishes. And I thought it was the sweetest thing. And we ran around the yard and blew the dandelion seeds everywhere to try to get more dandelions. Um, and it got me thinking about when I was a little kid, thinking that I could make a whole field of wildflowers if I blew all the dandelion seeds and how awesome it would be. Um, so it gave me this idea for, the, for this book called The Wishing Yard. And literally on my calendar and to-do list, almost every week since then, it has said, write The Wishing Yard, uh, write this children's book. And I just kind of kept pushing it, kept pushing it. Um, and this weekend, I had been doing a lot of research about creating our meadow at home and how to get wildflowers to grow there and just reading about how important biodiversity is. And um, I was just kind of sitting there and the whole book just came to me in like 15 minutes, which just kind of flowed out. I like had this feeling, I kind of said a prayer and just sat there and wrote the whole thing and um, I finished the wishing yard. So I am so excited. And uh, yeah, we're starting the process of uh, getting a children's book published. So I'll keep you posted, uh, but I just had to share.
If you like what you're seeing here, please like and subscribe. It really, really helps us support the channel. Thanks so much.